So first we're gonna go over flavor. That's a big part of cooking. You want something that tastes good. So we will go over the elements of what makes up flavor. We'll learn how to develop layers of flavor. Now these techniques we'll use in respect to making soup, but you can use these techniques in all of your cooking. So we will learn about the theory of flavor and especially the five tastes, including umami, which is known as the fifth taste. And this will help you to um, really round out those flavors in your soup and not have a flat soup that is missing something. We'll um, delve into all of the things that make up a good flavorful soup. Flavor is fundamental to everything that we cook. There are five tastes that are recognized. Sweet, salty, sour, bitter, and umami. These are the flavors that we perceive on our taste buds. And this is what we will utilize in order to make great recipes, great soups, and, and really anything that you make. Sweetness uh, is one of the flavors. Uh, you can get it with simple uh, sweetness, such as with sugar and juice, or you can utilize the sweetness in some vegetables such as beets and carrots. With beets, you can get them fresh or canned or even frozen, and you can roast them or saute them. Uh, carrots are another common vegetable that has some sweetness to it. Salt is an essential ingredient in savory cooking, especially in soups. You can use simple table salt or you can use ingredients that do double duty that have umami and are also salty, such as Worcestershire sauce, soy sauce, miso paste, and cheese. If you are going to use Worcestershire or soy sauce, just know that it will darken your soup a bit. So if you're looking for a lighter colored soup, miso paste will be your best bet. Sourness is a great way to round out flavors. It is far more common in Asian soups and Asian cooking than in Western cooking, but I do like to add a little bit of lemon juice or fresh lime juice or even vinegar at the end of my cooking. I think it adds a, 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 like a touch of freshness that you don't get otherwise. You have a lot of options when it comes to sourness. Uh, you can think outside the box with some sour cherries or tamarind paste, which you can buy uh, from the store or make your own. And then of course, uh, fresh citrus juice, as well as vinegar. We have light colored vinegars or lighter colored soups, and then we have the darker uh, vinegars, such as malt or uh, balsamic. Bitterness. Um, Western cooking doesn't really delve into bitter flavors uh, like Asian cooking, um, but it is definitely something worthwhile investigating and even experimenting with. There are different um, options for this, uh, bitter melon and bitter greens, such as arugula, or even artichoke and ginger. Artichoke uh, comes jarred, I've seen it canned, um, and ginger you can get fresh or jarred. My favorite topic, umami, also known as the fifth taste. Every savory dish needs umami, including soup. When the taste of food lingers in your mouth for a long time, it has a deep, satisfying taste to it. That's umami, also known as the fifth taste. How do we perceive umami? Glutamate receptors. We have glutamate receptors on our taste buds that signals the brain that we are eating something delightful. There are many ingredients rich in glutamate that we can use to our advantage. So by using these ingredients that are high in glutamate, we can get that umami flavor in our cooking and really take advantage of that fifth taste. Umami wasn't invented, it was discovered. In 1908, Kikune Aikida first identified the fifth taste. He was intrigued by how flavorful and satisfying his wife's soup was and was determined to find the magic behind her soup. Her soup was made with dashi, a Japanese style broth made from dried fish and kelp, both rich in glutamate, umami's secret ingredient. 
Unfortunately for us, there are many ingredients that are high in glutamate and umami. Um, they're easy to find, such as uh, fish sauce, canned tomatoes, canned fish, including sardines and anchovies. Um, there's also mushrooms, um, some salty cheese, such as Parmesan, miso paste. These all have high levels of glutamate and really help to develop that umami flavor. Fat in itself is not a flavor. However, foods that are high in fat do have a lot of flavor. Also, fat accentuates other flavors and really amplifies them. There is an added benefit to fat um, in that it adds a velvety texture on your tongue for a good mouthfeel. So do consider adding some fats to your soup, whether it be butter, cheese, nuts, oil, um, whatever you have. Some of my favorite ways to add fat to food is with ghee and butter. Ghee is clarified butter and has a higher smoke point. So I use it in the beginning of cooking in order to cook my aromatics without burning them. With um, nuts, such as peanuts and cashews, I actually make a butter out of them by blending them in a high-speed blender with some water, then adding it to the soup, which makes it really creamy. You can also add fat with oils, such as olive oil, sesame seed oil, and any oil that has a good flavor. The Maillard reaction is a chemical reaction between amino acids and reducing sugars that gives brown food its distinctive flavor. This is the browning effect on food that includes seared steaks, fried dumplings, cookies, biscuits, breads, and even toasted marshmallows. So how do you get this Maillard reaction? When searing food on the bottom of the pan, the Maillard reaction uh, will leave brown bits on the bottom. So don't clean this off before continuing to cook. I used to do this because I didn't know that that's where a large amount of the flavor was. These brown bits are called the fond and you want to actually nurture this. Essentially, you want to prevent this from burning. So to capture the flavor, add some liquid and scrape the bottom. Aromatics are a common method um, to develop layers of flavor in your cooking. Aromatics are usually added to the pot at the beginning with some fat over medium or low heat. The aromatics, which may include vegetables, herbs, and spices, are gently cooked in order to extract the flavor. You can either chop the aromatics small and leave them in the soup, or roughly chop them or leave them whole and retrieve them later in the soup making process. The most common aromatics that I use are actually the classics. Carrots, celery, onions, and garlic. You can either chop them small or large, depending on the texture that you want. And if you're going to use spices, add them towards the end and don't cook them more than one to two minutes with the aromatics because they will burn. So just guard against that and you'll be fine. And finally, we get to the liquid. So you can just use water and develop the flavors as you're cooking, or you can cheat like I do and add a broth or stock or bouillon. Bouillon comes in a paste that's convenient or granules or cubes. And then the broth and stock, they come either frozen, canned, or uh, if you're really ambitious, you can make your own and freeze it. That way you always have stock whenever you need it. So now you learned how flavor is developed. Now you have an arsenal of knowledge that will help you not only with soup making, but also with all of your cooking. So now you can make this full bodied uh, recipe, whatever, and you'll take everything that you learned about flavor and taste and how to develop layers of it in your cooking, and you'll just be able to level up your cooking. In the next section, we will learn how to add heat to your, to your soup and to all of your meals, really, and really round out those flavors and make your, your soup more interesting.